Uh, hey, so I'm um, software engineer at Bing Data. Uh, I've been uh, Airflow committer for a couple of months. I have been working on Open Image for uh, over two years now, and it's it was very heartwarming to see that the community grows, to see Open Image mentioned uh, from the stage a couple of times, even seen some product announcements, uh, but no one has told us actually what Open Image is. So I'm here to fill the gap. Uh, I'm here to tell you, like, what is Open Lineage, how how it's designed, uh, how to use it in Airflow, how does it work underneath, and how can you use it to get Lineage from your own custom operators? What what we have in the future, maybe something bonus, but <laughs> I doubt we'll have the time for that. So, what is data lineage? Data lineage is basically a set of relationships between data sets. Uh, producers and consumers of them, and input as outputs of each job. So think of it as a, not only a data set to data set relation, but we have also things that generate the data and uh, produce, consume it. And you might think of it as a like DAG of something, right? So here's a illustration from some very old uh, Earth version. Sorry for anyone who thinks it's a uh, current one. But what I want to see say that can get quite complicated, right? And it's not the worst thing that can happen. And this is a real illustration found in Google about somebody describing his problem. So uh, we all know that the relationships can get pretty complicated. Uh, and that is a single DAG, right? What if you have multiple teams talking uh, to each other through data contracts? You have uh, relationships between them and it can get really big. So limited metadata, uh, well, we can, uh, like the questions that we can ask is not only what produces, what consumes the data, but there's a lot of more that we can uh, ask and what allows us to better understand the data situation. What's the data source, right? What's the schema of the data? Uh, who's the owner? Who's using it? How often it's updated? What has changed? And our mission is to define the open standard uh, for the automatic collection of this lineage metadata from data pipelines as they are running. So I want to focus right now on two things. First is automatic, and second is as they are running. So first is automatic, right? Uh, previously, and you can see right now, use kind of this uh, lineage backend which means you manually annotate your DAGs. And this is example from documentation. On the left, how to use the feature. And on the right, I've uh, like removed the actual annotation stuff. So the uh, manual version of doing this turns your 18 lines, 30 lines of code much longer if you uh, take a look at like character count. And basically means you have to do a lot of more work than uh, doing this automatic. Second, in the runtime, uh, this is like my favorite opening slide, and basically you can take a look at the photo and try to determine where it is, right? After the fact, you've taken it, there's the sunset, it's nice, you see some beach, or you can just take a look at metadata and see that, hey, we have this latitude and longitude embedded inside our image file taken where the image was actually created. So uh, before Open Lineage, right, uh, we had everything could have to talk to each other based on some uh, interfaces that were defined by the consumers or the producers, and we all have to find a way to connect to each other. So we aim to be the thing in the middle that allows all of you to speak the one language and basically connect to each other. And uh, there's a lot of actually uh, companies, tools that invented it. So uh, I took a time in the lunch break to add data hub in Google to this slide. It's not everything. Uh, we have more. Sorry if I didn't add you there, uh, but the idea is to grow this community much more. So a little bit about actual design of open lineage internals. So the data model is pretty simple, if you look at it from a high level. There are three core entities, run, job, and data set. And we think, you know, if, if you have a hammer, then everything is a nail. We, we think the same. Uh, 
So data set is, can be not only data set, but beyond also like a, a model, right? A job can be not only like Airflow task or that, but also a, let's say BR dashboard, right? So what they actually are, data set, I mean, everyone can imagine that it can be a, a data, some database table, it can be S3 bucket, GCS bucket, it can be Kafka topic. Everything that contains the data is a logical uh, definition of some data. Uh, job is something that regularly processes this data. So it can be your Airflow, uh, some, some Airflow tasks, the whole DAG, and run is the individual like execution of this task. So uh, it represents like single, single run of it. Uh, it's defined as JSON schema spec, uh, and very important thing is that the job, the names of jobs and data sets are consistent. So we match everything based on those properties. And that's not everything. Uh, okay, let's maybe skip the facets. So we extend this model with facets and facets are like just atomic piece of metadata that we can attach to the score entities. So uh, basically, if you want to add something new, if you want to uh, let us, let's say add, describe a schema of the data set, you can do this by attaching uh, the schema data set facet to the data set uh, entity. And uh, what this attaching mean is just, you know, uh, it's a JSON, uh, you can put it in the facet dictionary, basically. Uh, so facet examples like for data sets, there are some stats, right? How large the data set is, what's the schema, what's the version, uh, what's the column level image of this data set. For job, where's the source code? What are the dependencies of the job? Like, uh, what's the query plan, for example, if you use something like Spark? Uh, for run, it can be a scheduled time of your DAG. It can be like uh, some parameters, stuff like that. And uh, we think of, uh, execution as something that is described by multiple events, uh, a series of asynchronous events. So our DAGs are starting, but they're also completing. So we emit multiple events uh, based on the state of the DAG, for example, in Airflow, uh, describing what actual, what's the state of the, uh, of this execution right now. So before we start, after we complete or fail, or it's getting aborted or anything else, basically. So how to use it? And since Airflow 2.7, OpenLineage is available as Airflow provider, and it's pre-installed in official Airflow Docker image. So to use it, you just need a bit of configuration. Uh, you can look this basically at the Docker image to see that it's there. Uh, and what you need to do is basically configure it, configure it to say where do you want it to send the events. Uh, despite it's described as this transport, it's a JSON that describes the type of the uh, like output, and in this case URL, it can be something else like just to you know print it to console, send to Kafka. Uh, there are some other options. Uh, namespace is uh, the namespace of the job that we were uh, think before. So if you, for example, don't put anything, then we don't know anything about your Airflow instance. It will be a default, right? If you have multiple Airflows, you can easily differentiate between the events based on this namespace thing. So let's try to run a DAG live uh, and see that it works. So I have some very simple DAG that uses Snowflake to insert something to the table, create a table. I have a ugly habit of running this live on Breeze in latest main, so uh, it may be, it's a dangerous thing. So I have a very strong password. Uh, and something doesn't work, but it's not the DAG that I want. So uh, let's take a look. This is Marcus. This is a reference implementation of like open lineage backend. Uh, if you want to know about Marcus, then I'm sure you can find Willy here. He's the lead of this project. And there's nothing here, right? No jobs found. Uh, let's unpause this and see that it's running. Mm, 
-hmm. Okay, it works. So let's refresh markers now. And yeah, we see, you know, we see something, right? We created the data set, except that we can see here, you know, the actual SQL of the job and basically you could see much more, but let's get back to uh, actual. Uh, where is the actual? So I have a backup here if it doesn't work. Uh, so how does it work, right? So we had an open image integration previously. And if you listen to a talk from previous Airflow Summit where I and Pavel here uh, described how it works, it was a different thing. We defined something called extractors. It was a special class created for each supported operator that kind of understood its internals and know where to look for data. And this was bad. This depends on the uh, internal of the operator and this kind of brittle. And I have an example here that is from our code. Uh, so we wanted to get hook of uh, some database to basically call it and get more data. And in some version of the provider, get DB hook was renamed to get hook. So you know we had to do stuff like this to keep up with the development. Uh, and it, it's there was a lot of instances of thing like breaking like this. And the worst thing is that we knew the, about this after the fact, right? So uh, somebody wrote to us that it broke and it, they don't have lineage, right? And it's bad, right? You, lineage is something that you want to depend on. So our idea is that the, each operator exposes lineage themselves. It maintains the lineage contract, uh, which is provided by us, uh, by the operator lineage data structure. So, and this allows us and everyone who works on this to add tests to make sure that this contract is kept with the evolution of the operator. Uh, and those are just regular Airflow uh, tests in Airflow repository. So the breaking lineage is detected by you know, Airflow CI. Uh, how does it look? You don't need to you know, expose internals right now. Uh, and the start complete fail states are exposed by different methods that you can write on your operator. So for example, this is a BigQuery to GCS operator. And this is slightly simplified version of how this works. So uh, we just take a destination cloud storage URI and we have a, a data set ID, project ID, and template ID of this operator. And this is our input data set and we have our output data set, which is Google storage uh, bucket and path to the data set. Uh, so this is the structure. This basically has a list of inputs and outputs uh, and drop and run facets. Also the inputs and outputs code paying their own facets. Why it's not a full event, open each event? Because our integration is also providing some common parts that uh, expose some other facets describing the Airflow instance and uh, stuff about the execution that would need to be done multiple times by each operator. So. Uh, we provide this. Uh, this is how it works basically in a diagram. So we are called by a listener API, which is an Airflow component. Uh, we check if each operator has implemented lineage methods. If it has, uh, lineage methods are those uh, get open lineage facets on the big and start and failure. Uh, it, if there are, then we call them and we get the data, we enrich it uh, by the data in the common part. So we also provide some additional utilities to operators. We also have an event that describes the whole DAG run. And we provide a backup mechanism. If you have those manually defined lineage and there's no defined automatic collection, we basically we take the data. So uh, how do you basically get lineage from your own custom operators? Uh, you can define, you have to define methods in the same class with the rest of the code. Uh, you basically encapsulate data that would otherwise be public, and then you write those embedded unit tests that make changes easy. Uh, so not everything has to have the open image implementation, right? There are tons of operators, I don't know, thousands maybe, uh, operators in Airflow. And a lot of categories don't need to have any lineage support, right? Because some of them are just used to send data to your stack or create a bucket or create or just you know send a 
mail, gRPC operator, simple HTTP operator. Um, basically, uh, we don't need to cover them, I think. Uh, so the Lynch is called like this. So the, there's an open in the get open Lynch method in start that's called first before execute method. And then at the end, it's called incomplete and no fire. Why it is important to, to be aware that it's called before execute? Uh, so before, because we don't have the full data, right? Before execution, uh, we, for example, don't have any job ID that was generated during the uh, run. <coughs> Uh, sometimes we don't know before execution where we're putting the data. And this allows us to save the execution metadata on the actual uh, run to then use them in complete event. So in this case, we are running some query uh, and the hook returns uh, job ID. And then we can use this job ID to like get data from the API of the database. So what we suggest is to avoid the work, doing the work on execution, uh, which means you save data that you need the job ID, for example, and do not call the uh, backend eagerly because it's open in usage is optional, right? If you don't configure it, user won't have an event sent. And uh, the network calls and processing that you would do would be uh, just wasting his time, right? Uh, no additional work should be done if the user hasn't open inch configured. And let's take a look at those tests. So I have an example of some copy operator which can copy data from one bucket to another. And we have a perfectly working implementation of this uh, get open inch events and start method, which basically takes the data and generates the data set from it. And there's a test that confirms that if we provide this input and output bucket and all the parameters, the data will look as such. But then somebody came and uh, he wanted to copy data from one bucket to multiple buckets, right? And the uh, open image implementation looks the same. So the test that we wrote before failed because now uh, there's multiple outputs. So we can fix this and the user who made the change notices this and can take some time, fix the test, fix the open lineage implementation, and everything is green at the same time they made the change. So let's take a look at the future of what we're trying to do. So what we need to do is provide more coverage for more providers. Uh, there's still a lot of ground to cover. There's still, you know, we have those hundreds operators and a lot of them will benefit from more coverage. Would look more help for the community. If you have your own, if you're an Airflow provider maintainer, consider uh, adding support for open lineage. We can help you. Uh, we also, you know, would uh, benefit from feedback. What operator do you use? Uh, what operator do you want to see lineage from? And uh, basically, how can we help? So we need to add more documentation, more explanation of, of what you get from actual open lineage from particular operators. And we think to embed this somehow to the Airflow itself to make it easier to understand what supports lineage and what don't. And in general sense, there's an open re lineage registry idea provided by Julian Dem, which you can look at open lineage Slack, I think, which would describe this more generally because open lineage isn't only Airflow, is it, it's a, uh, Spark integration, the BT integration, Flink integration, and more that you can uh, also use. So what we think is integration with AAP 48 data sets. Right now, there are two concepts of data sets, right? The open lineage data set, and there's the Airflow data set that is used for uh, data where scheduling. And there are a lot of opportunities to engage on both sides, right? If you have a defined data set uh, somewhere, then you can use it to emit the event and know what the data actually is. But on the other hand, uh, we can use open inch events to do this data where scheduling. If something outside the Airflow changed the data set, there's no reason why Airflow couldn't be scheduling something based on the open inch information. And you know, this is one of the examples how open inch events can be used uh, outside of just you know, drawing the lineage graph. Uh, and I think the most important feature is that Python operator Python operator is the most used operator in Airflow, right? 
and it's still not covered. Why? Because it's basically an arbitrary Python code. How can we know anything about it? And the same for task flow, which is actually something like, you know, underscore Python wrapped operator uh, actually inside. There's a Kubernetes pod operator and probably a lot more operators like this. So our idea is to add support for hooks. If you use Airflow hooks uh, or Airflow datasets, uh, they will track their own lineage inside, similar to what we do with operators. And then Python operators will be able to expose the lineage uh, and present it as its own. Uh, so, you know, we turn like the uh, arbitrary code into known, understood code. And probably make it easier to surface your own lineage data from inside of it. If you have knowledge of your lineage somehow, because you're using something else that allows you to expose it. Uh, for example, some API that you can call, uh, we should, you know, you should be able to surface it as an open lineage event instead of... Uh, as not knowing anything about it. And so we have an open inch ecosystem survey. Uh, if you have an idea, you can talk to us, but you can also uh, take a look here and, there and basically fill out the survey. Uh, and so summary, open inch is open standard. We are free, all free to contribute, to uh, voice your opinion, to use it, and the fact that we are native in, natively integrated in Airflow makes this all possible, uh, makes this tracking uh, work. And the standard inside Airflow uh, will allow us to reduce the amount of operational maintenance bugs for everyone. You all have a big impact on how this will look in the future and what features we'll have and what everyone will be uh, able to do with this standard. Hello, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was really great. Um, my question is, in order for lineage graphing to work between different jobs, right, to actually connect the dependencies of data sets to jobs, you actually need to enforce that different runs are re um, referring to the same data set entity that mm -hmm. needs to be connected with the same name. I think this is kind of solvable in a single instance of Airflow but maybe more challenging when you have different namespaces and different infrastructures working on different data sets together. Mm -hmm. What is your kind of school of thought on maintaining that governance so that lineage actually works? So there are two answers. We've thought about it. Uh, first answer is that some systems like Apache Iceberg, Delta Lake, provide the snapshot ID, current version ID, and we can surface this information. There is a data set version, data set facet uh, that provides this information. So if we read something like this, we know exactly what dataset version we've read. Uh, other than that, we kind of leave the challenge to the consumers, right? Uh, some of them basically um, take the ingestion time as the actual uh, event time. So if you modify the dataset, uh, so we will, if you read from dataset from version A, then write to it. It's a version B and then read to it. So the first version already will be A and second will be B, right? This is one possible solution. It's not foolproof, but not every system like uh, maintains this versioning that we can read, right? We have time for one last question, if there's anybody courageous. Yeah, so first comment on, on the last, uh, last thing. Another thing that could be benefit could be leverage is conventions around uh, fully qualified domain names as we include some convention how we name assets with certain certain systems then you can use it to actually treat it as UID and, and, and link link data sets even if they're processed in different places that's actually something that we are uh, we're doing as well uh, one question on inputs and outputs of uh, the open lineage uh, metadata that you define in every operator uh, these inputs and outputs are quite similar to inlets and outlets that we have in the tasks as well. Do you have any plans of you know, somehow integrating these, uh, these paths in, in the code or, or, or these fields? Because uh, they serve, represent pretty much the same thing, right? So we do. I had a slide about it, but I removed it to fit to the session. Sorry. So we take it as a backup, right? If you have them defined and we have no automated collection, then we'll use your entities as basically data set names and namespaces. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for great questions and great presentation, Machi. Uh <laughs>